If you want a little bit more power in your voice, I wanna share a trick with you today, so stay tuned. Hi and welcome to today's video. In case you don't know me yet, my name is Freya Casey, professional singer and vocal coach from Germany. I have sung professionally in opera, I've been on cruise ships for years as an artist, I have sung with bands and done all kinds of things, musical theater. Um, so today I just want to give you just some tips. It's almost a trick, it's not a trick, but it's just a tweak that you can use and it really does wonders for giving you more power. A lot of times what's really difficult is when you stand statically. And of course, I teach my students, you have to know how to be centered. And I'm gonna have a video about this next week. You have to be centered and uh, really be grounded. I will explain to you what that means because you don't wanna fidget around. You don't wanna have to do that. However, a lot of times, and if you've ever been part of a play or like a musical theater show, you know that when you actually act things out, you sing differently. It's just like almost you have more power. The reason is because for singing, you actually need your body. You don't just need the voice box in your face. It's literally an entire body process. And also your brain is definitely linked to your body. And when you activate your body, and I recently made a video about that too, when you activate your body, your support works differently, you breathe deeper, more deeply, you're enunciating much better, you're just making everything bigger and you're kind of waking up your senses, if you will. So, you know, when you're just very static and you collapse in your posture, and then probably something very small is gonna come out. However, when you really activate your body, you have a different level of intensity. So what I do a lot of times when I have to wake myself up or illustrate something, it's just a crutch. Remember, you're not gonna do this in performance a lot when you have a concert. I know having a mic is always a lot easier because you know where to put your hand, but when you don't have a mic, you just stand there and you're like, what am I supposed to do with my hands? But uh, when you move, when you practice, move. Just move. Sometimes it helps to not just stand statically, but number one, either walk through the room or number two, actually illustrate the musical phrase that you're singing that illustrates the intensity. I have a set of weights in my studio here and here they are. And sometimes I use them for my students just to kind of illustrate that it's not just this, but it's the body and it's controlled motion. It's not, yeah, ah, that is uncontrolled, but it's more, yeah. And sometimes that illustration of where the motion goes, where am I increasing intensity and where am I, in a very controlled way, decreasing again, it really helps to illustrate. And so sometimes you will see people practice and they do a lot of things with their hands and I do that, but it's really important to always know it's a crutch. You should also know how to not use your hands, but here's the thing, your brain connects something that you did before with emotion and then can do the same thing without the motion because there's already connection there. So let me just illustrate. So when I sing like a Mozart aria, So just doing the gesturing, I'm not fidgeting around, but I'm doing this very legato movement and I'm illustrating where I need crescendo and decrescendo, taking a deep breath, staying in my nice centered posture. It really helps me. And then when I take away the arm movements, my brain has already connected and then it does. Still imagining. So really help yourself by doing physical motion sometimes. And here's one trick that I, when you have trouble getting from the beginning of the phrase to the end of the phrase in one breath and you just run out of breath before you're done, here's something you can do. You can look at, let's just say you, you put a chair somewhere. Put a chair somewhere 
at one end of the room and then you start at the other end of the room and you pace yourself walking toward that chair. You start walking at the beginning of your musical phrase, you start singing it, but you look at the chair and you walk toward it, you know, pace yourself so you don't arrive before you're supposed to end the phrase. And you pace your breath accordingly. It works every time for my students. <laughs> it really, really helps. So if I did the pot de amor and I'm having trouble to getting through that phrase, I would actually, let me just illustrate this. So I'd like, here's the chair and here's me. Now I sit down on the chair. Just having that illustration for your brain to connect with your body because you sing both with your brain and your body. It really helps put it together. But again, it's just a crutch. Don't get used to it because there's nothing worse than a singer who does like stuff all the time on stage and who's like, oh, the entire time you're singing. It really is distracting. And sometimes it's not helping what you're actually wanting to convey. You know, if you're conveying this, but sometimes even on a legato line, there could be something very agitating, like word wise. And um, it just works out that way sometimes. Then you can do a legato motion with your body you, you want the agitation, but you want the legato line in your voice. So it's just really a crutch. Give the video a thumbs up if you want to connect your body, your brain, and your voice also. Check out all my free resources that I have on my website, MasterYourVoice.tv. And check out my book in case you have not read it yet. It's available on Amazon, Master Your Voice. The link is also below. I also have an audiobook version that you can download from my website if you need more motivation. Have a most wonderful day. And until next time, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing.